Hey gang, back with another video for you today. Loads of new fragrances coming out and I've got a video today on a lot of launches happening soon, exciting new fragrances. Some will be really great of course, some will be just okay and some will probably fall flat. But I'm gonna let you know what they are coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Who's excited for new fragrances? There's a lot coming out. I think now that the pandemic's kind of getting situated, maybe it's gonna be done soon, who knows? I think a lot of brands that had um, held off on launching fragrances are just launching a ton of stuff. And I've got many fragrances here that I'm gonna talk to you about. Some I have already smelled, some I might have brought over here that I've already done videos about, and a few I'm well, several that I'm really, really excited to smell in the near future. I'll get to them, but before I do, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So I have done videos on By Killian's latest fragrances, Lure Vert, and also this one here, Apple Brandy on the Rocks. If you haven't caught those videos, go catch them. But Lure Vert, is a great fragrance featuring absinthe with patchouli and I believe it's got violet leaves. I like its earthy uh, experience with the green um, experience with the absinthe note. It's, it's boozy but not necessarily ultra boozy like apple brandy on the rocks on the other hand. And I like apple brandy on the rocks. It smells really really delicious. It reminds me of the original apple brandy on the rocks but this one does have some uh, unique twists to it. And I'm, I'm appreciating this one a little more than the original Apple Brandy that uh, came out as an exclusive to New York City uh, boutique. That had a more of a subdued quality. This one does scream a little more, but still, Killiam fragrances I find to be not ultra screamers. But really a delicious concoction here. And uh, stay tuned for a video on um, I've got several videos planned for Killian fragrances, so stay tuned. Uh, the, the next video that's coming up for uh, Killian fragrances will feature these two and many more fragrances uh, because, you know, I do enjoy this brand and they do have some great releases. So those are my thoughts on these two fragrances. If you haven't caught my first impressions review and also what my thoughts are on previous versions uh, of fragrances similar to those, from the House of Killian. It already aired yesterday, so please, or the day before, so please go catch that. So the first fragrance I'm going to talk to you about is Byredo's Young Rose. It's a fragrance that just came out. It was just put out September 1st, and I visited the uh, Byredo boutique here in San Francisco, and I smelled it. I did enjoy the smell of it. Initially, when I smelled it, I thought I'd, I smelled green touches, but I think it's more musks, and there's some vegetal notes in there that kind of came off a little green to me. But I had just come over to the Byredo boutique from the Le Labo boutique where I bought a city exclusive. So I think my nose was a little off. So in the end, I think Young Rose is a, a great smelling rose. It's more of a musky rose and a spicy powdery rose. And uh, does it have green touches? I think there might be some light green touches running throughout it. But it features rose, iris, ambrette, Sichuan pepper, musk, and ambroxan. So the notes seem great. And they already have two other... Uh, rose fragrances at this house, uh, Byredo. They have Rose Noir and I think they have Rose of No Man's Land. So this is a new rose fragrance from Byredo, Young Rose. I, I do enjoy it. Uh, I want to test it out a little more with some samples. But what I did pick up from the Byredo Boutique, which supposedly is a exclusive, and I also Instagrammed about this, is uh, a fragrance called Rodeo. So this I thought Smelled great. It reminded me of Unnamed. I don't know if you guys have ever sampled Unnamed, but uh, I like this one because it did remind me of it, but when you wear it, it actually has lots of leather. It's a leather fragrance, and it's, it's appropriately titled Rodeo. And this is one of a few fragrances I'm going to show on the video. This is Rodeo right here. What I like about this leather is it, as I said, it reminds me of Unnamed, but it does become a leather. Unnamed had lots of violets. And I get lots of violet leaves with this one. It's very crunchy, crisp, and fruity as well with apple-y kind of fruitiness. So I like this experience. It kind of maybe reminded me of the idea of the new Ombre Leather Parfum with the whole ozonic violet leaves touch. Here, they credit violet in the notes. It's suede, leather, violet, vetiver, ambergris. 
but I'm definitely picking up Violet Leaves. There's a crunchy crispness about it. Violet Leaves, ozonic touches come in. It's actually really, really great. It's a great scent, and I kind of like it a little more than uh, Ombre Leather Parfum. This seems a little more substantial, and I like that whole apple crispy fruitiness. So, anyway, those are my thoughts on Rodeo. If you haven't sampled it and you are near a boutique, a uh, Byredo boutique, go, go sample it in store. But I'm not 100% sure it definitely is a Byredo boutique exclusive because I think you can buy it on their website. And I, I did uh, a little research and I noticed that it's selling at a few places, but not where I shop for Byredo fragrances like Zigio Perfumery here. They don't have this one. Either way, I like this one, Byredo Rodeo. Byredo Rodeo kind of rhymes. <laughs> and uh, I think it'll be perfect with that whole ozonic touch. So, I do want to mention this is not a new fragrance, Gaiac 10. It's from the Le Labo City Exclusives. And I have a whole Le Labo video coming out very soon as well. Stay tuned for that. But this, I, I've been wanting and I finally have it. And I, I kind of, uh, you know, went to the Byredo Boutique and sampled everything there as far as City Exclusives goes. This actually jumped out at me. It kind of falls in the middle of something like... Benjo in 19 and Vanille because it has vanillic touches. It also has uh, resinous touches, but it's all very creamy and dry woods together with an olibanum note running through it, like an incense -y kind of a vibe. Really, really great. Pricey, uh, but great. Uh, so I'm glad to have this one as well. And stay tuned for my Byredo, uh, well, not Byredo, stay tuned for my Le Labo City Exclusives video, which I should air very, very soon. Those of you that are interested in finding out about City Exclusive, I'll be featuring eight City Exclusives uh, fragrances in that video. All right, so another fragrance house that I'm lo looking forward to is Commodity. They're doing some updates with their fragrances and they've just announced two fragrances. Although I think Paper was already a fragrance they sold. Milk is one that I'm looking forward to and they, it looks like they've redone their bottles. And recently they did, had a sale buy one and get one bottle for free and they've also discontinued a few fragrances Oris, Tonka and I believe tea got discontinued but now they have milk and paper I just found out about it as I was putting this video together so I don't have the notes for it but milk sounds really great milky electronic fragrances sound cozy uh, perfect for fall paper on the other hand Sounds like it might remind me of, uh, what do you call it? Le Labo's uh, Santal 33, I think that's what that fragrance reminds me of. So we shall see how that is. I think I had sampled paper in the past, unless I'm thinking of something else, but I could have sworn that Commodity had a fragrance called paper. Anyway, those are two exciting new releases. I'm excited to sample them and also see what they've done with their bottles. I've seen photos of the bottles and uh, they look okay, although I like the previous bottles still, but we shall see how they become for the new uh, bottles. So we've got a new fragrance launching from the house of Juliet Has a Gun, and I've been really excited about this one. Lily Fantasy is the name of it, and I do enjoy Juliet Has a Gun fragrances. They do combine some synthetic uh, notes in their you know fragrances uh, along with like real notes, like Ambroxan comes up quite frequently with this brand and they use it in their not a perfume and not a perfume superdose fragrances so here we've got something focusing on lilies it says lily fantasy but the notes are tuberose jasmine bubblegum amber and ambroxan so what do you guys think of this one does it sound great to you i'm quite curious bubblegum is kind of an interesting note i like the idea of it uh, although there are some fragrances that smell like bubblegum that are not featuring a bubblegum note. So this one actually features bubblegum note and it's kind of interesting that they combine it with tuberose and jasmine. Maybe perhaps the tuberose jasmine with the bubblegum creates a kind of a lily-like effect of a lily note. We shall see. But Juliet has a gun's uh, lily fantasy sounds like a great uh, fragrance uh, for me. So Ormond Jane has a new fragrance called Avernia. So I do enjoy Ormond Jane fragrances and I like their classiness there's a very very uh you know sophisticated classiness with their fragrance but also very elegant because the fragrances are just i don't know something about them just screams regal and uh not necessarily like royal or something like that but they're just really really dressy and very very sophisticated smelling whereas the fragrances do not scream they're not over dosed in notes and things like that they just wear perfectly for someone that wants to uh you know wear fragrances but they don't want to shout it out to everyone and also smell unique and great so i think um they do 
that perfectly with this brand and their new fragrance Avernia sounds like it would be a great fragrance. I think it's focusing on oak moss and similar notes but it has orris, cashmere, oak moss, rose, pink pepper, freesia, jasmine, black currant. Any of you fans of Ormond Jane fragrances let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out and if you like the idea of Avernia let me know as well. A lot of the fragrances of Ormond Jane are created by Geza Schoen who owns the brand eccentric molecules so I can see why this brand has these kind of is the word translucent or transparent uh, experience comes up with these fragrances they don't seem thick but there's also really really great smells they have good longevity because they do end up using synthetic molecules uh, because uh, you know Geza Schoen uses them in his eccentric molecules fragrances uh, so that's what I like about this brand I like the unique smells and then also the fact that they're not like, you know, really, really intense, beefy kind of um, dense fragrances, if that makes sense to you guys. So let me know if you're a fan of this brand and if you're looking forward to Avernia from Ormond Jane House. But the next one I know a lot of you probably are waiting for is Eben Fumé from the House of Tom Ford in the Private Blend collection. And I spoke to someone at Neiman Marcus. I think this is going to be in the more expensive collection. I think what... Tom Ford's doing now is just only releasing things in the more expensive collection and I heard it was a sales rep for Tom Ford said it's going to launch as a 50 ml and then also as a I think as a large um, decanter and then they'll see if there's going to be additional sizes but this is uh, again up in the air with this particular brand as they had announced lost cherry in a large decanter but they never launched it so we shall see until it launches what's going to happen with this one but this one seems like it's deep and dark and woody and incensey and ambery i like the idea of it let's see how it turns out but it features the notes of palo santo ebony wood leather incense papyrus violet leaves labdanum black pepper resins and guyac wood seems like it's a perfect scent for the winter so intense notes ambery touches lots of woody touches smoky touches of course, ebony is the, the 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 focus note, ebony wood, and then fumé, so it's smoky kind of. We shall see how it is. It sounds really, really exciting, and let me know if you guys are excited about this one as I am. So the next two fragrances I already know are out, or are about to be put for sale. I noticed them, they were at Neiman Marcus as my sales associate came and told me. We've got two great fragrances from Aqua de Parma, Wooden Spices, and Lily of the Valley. They weren't selling yet, but they gave me first, you know, sniffs of them. And I quite enjoyed Oud and Spices. I thought it was great because it featured Oud with cloves, along with uh, cinnamon, raspberry, pink pepper, rose, labdanum, patchouli, and bergamot. So I enjoyed this one and I liked the combination of Oud and cloves together. It was very, very spicy. It also had a kind of a holiday-ish kind of a vibe to it with the Oud wood, but Oud didn't seem like it was like intensely oody. It's more woody kind of an experience. So a woody, spicy uh, fragrance experience sounds really great. And I did enjoy the way it smelled on me. But now on the other hand, Lily of the Valley, which I'm a fan of this flower, really, really fell flat on me. It turned into very, very calone heavy aquatic lily of the valley fragrance which it has a kind of a fishiness about it which calone tends to have it's this synthetic note that they use to create this marine smell i'm not saying that there is calone in the notes because it's not listed but on me when i was wearing it i was like this is not smelling really great but it features lily of the valley black currant bergamot jasmine geranium magnolia grapefruit cedar and musk let me know if you've tried these two fragrances from aqua de parma uh, I think they're already selling, but uh, these are kind of uh, fragrances that I'm anticipating. And I did not care for the Lily of the Valley on me, but I did enjoy the Oudin Spices on me. So I probably look forward to picking up a bottle of the Oudin Spices uh, very soon. But there is a new a spicy leather fragrance coming out from uh, Ferragamo, Salvatore Ferragamo. It's a brand that I don't really look up to for fragrances, but this particular one sounds great and it's also created by a pretty well-known perfumer, so I'm quite excited about this one as a designer fragrance. So it features leather, saffron, black pepper, patchouli, sandalwood, nutmeg, bergamot, cedar, clary sage. How many of you like this brand? Do you like any of their fragrances? Let me know, put a comment down. But this one to me, bottle design wise and also smell wise, sounds really, really interesting and I'm quite curious to uh, smell uh, the fragrance and uh, see what they've done with it. Uh, I do want to like this brand. Leather is becoming a little overwhelming. There's a lot of leather fragrances, but yeah, let's see how they do. It's a spicy leather. 
we shall see how it's done. Uh, I hope it's good. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, as I said. Now, on the other hand, Amouage has Silver Oud coming out, created by Cecile Zorokin, I believe, and uh, this is in a collection that only had one bottle previously, the red bottle, Rose and Incense, I think it was. Now we've got Silver Oud. As of late, I know this bottle design has come out before in other fragrances, but as of late, previously they launched the, the Rose and Incense and then now the Silver Oud. But this particular fragrance features Cipriol, Oud, Gayak Wood, Birch, Castorium, Vanilla, Cedar, Patchouli, and Amber. So just like the Tom Ford uh, Eben Fumé, this is very, very dark notes. There's no citruses le uh, you know, featured in this particular fragrance, just like the Tom Ford. So it's all very dark deep, rich, woody, incensey, resinous, smoky kind of notes that, let's see how it's done. Cipriol is featured. Uh, I like Cipriol and then Oud together. Uh, I think it's going to be great. We shall see though. Silver Oud, the idea of silver doesn't sound great in a fragrance, but I like the idea of silver Oud. And also, Amouage has a fragrance called Silver, so this doesn't have anything to do with silver, I believe. I, I hope silver is still selling. I have a bottle of it, but uh, I rarely wear it. But silver... Uh, as a fragrance, for me, is a very fresh fragrance with uh, incense running throughout it. This seems a lot more dense, obviously, with uh, all the notes that I mentioned. But let me know if you're looking forward to this uh, particular release from Amouage, Silver Oud. Put a comment down so I can find out. So someone recently reached out to me and said, do you know about this? And I'm like, I don't know about this fragrance. So I had to ask my sales associate. It's a Dior Privé fragrance called Cheval Blanc Paris. So I kind of looked up, looked it up and Apparently, this is a, a specific fragrance created for a Dior-owned spa. I don't know what the fragrance smells like. I couldn't f find any info, and I don't even know if it's new that hasn't been selling yet, or if it is, because the spa itself listed all the Privé fragrances from Dior, and I was quite curious. So it's a spa that has products plus fragrances by Dior, and I'm very, very curious about Cheval Blanc uh, Paris uh, fragrance. Anyone try it yet? Uh, are you curious about this one? I'm still waiting for that Bigarad to come out, but my sales associate doesn't know if uh, that's coming out this year. He, he, he said again, it might be a online exclusive, but this particular one, Cheval Blanc Paris, he didn't know anything about. So we shall find out what this one is. But Gucci, on the other hand, has a Alchemist Garden collection fragrance coming out called A Gloaming Night. Man, the names of Gucci's Alchemist Garden fragrances are kind of interesting to me. Gloam a Gloaming Night is sounding kind of odd, but we shall see how it is. Uh, uh, once again, I believe it's created by Alberto Moriez. And it features great notes, cinnamon, vetiver, and patchouli. Who cannot like those notes? Together, I think they work great. Vetiver and patchouli really do work great. Um, and then cinnamon together? I believe Javoy's uh, Incident Diplomatique has vetiver patchouli. I think it's two kinds of vetiver, plus it has nutmeg. So let's see how Gucci's A Gloaming Night, kind of similar idea I'm thinking, but we shall see how it is. But this is a very expensive collection. They do have some great fragrances. Recently I featured The Last Day of Summer in my fall fragrances video, or fragrances that smell like autumn fall. If you haven't caught that video, go catch it. But I think they do have some great fragrances in the collection. Another one that I'm looking forward to is Oriana from the House of Parfums de Marly, just because it's created by Nathalie Lorsan. Uh, when I looked up the notes, I thought, oh my god, this is reminding me of something like Love Don't Be Shy and that kind of a ballpark fragrance. I don't know, but it features marshmallows, ambrette, raspberry, blackcurrant, orange blossom, whipped cream, musk, grapefruit, bergamot, and mandarin. So it does sound great. It does kind of sound like the idea of Love Don't Be Shy. It does have different notes. It does, uh, it, it is created by Nathalie Lorson along with Hamid Maradi Kashani. So I think they're both great perfumers. I don't think Nathalie Lorson has created anything for Parfums of Marley before. I could be wrong, but I know Hamid Maradi Kashani has created fragrances Marley, for Marley before. So this one is very, very exciting to me. I'm hoping it's going to be turning out great. But the next fragrance I want to talk to you about is Montal, and they have yet another Oud fragrance. What's new, right? Montal does Oud very well, and they've got a ton of Oud fragrances. This one's called Oud Edition, featuring notes of rose, Oud, frankincense, leather, sandalwood, and musk. Who knows? It could be great. I have a love-hate relationship with tobacco, oud or oud tobacco. It didn't really act like tobacco to me. So uh, we'll see We'll see how this one is. It sounds like this is kind of like their ultimate oud fragrance. And sometimes they do that like, okay, we're gonna, coming out with a new one. This is going to be the best oud. And I feel like they're trying to top 
or one up their own fragrances and sometimes it falls flat but this one has some great notes rose and oud together is great and frankincense leather sandalwood and musk together will be great as well so we shall see so a couple of things from serge lutens coming out which is a little confusing to me they have cre recreation of two fragrances in a confit de parfum version of ombre sultan and la fille berlin so they have these new versions of these fragrances like Flankers coming out and recently I announced that Serge Lutens is pulling out of the USA they're not going to distribute fragrances in stores they're only going to be doing shipping from their own website so now I find out that they're coming out with these two fragrances it's going to be a little tough for us to get these fragrances sadly but these two fragrances Ombre Sultan and also La Fille de Berlin come in both a Confit de Parfum version and a Toisson Dior version, which basically translates to Golden Fleece. I don't know anything about these fragrances, what they're going to smell like. I do own Ombre Sultan, a big fan of it. I have enjoyed La Fille Berlin, but never owned a bottle. So I, I'll see how they come up with them and what happens with these two fragrances because they're sounding really really great and of course I do enjoy Ombre Sultan a lot but maybe these two fragrances are going to uh, get me to buy La Fille Berlin because I I've never worn it and I, I've enjoyed that rose it's a great rose fragrance so who knows uh, what's gonna happen with them but are you guys excited about these two versions let me know I actually caught them on Instagram uh, you know posting about these two fragrances and I was like whoa this is brand new Sad that they're no longer going to be distributing here in the States, but I guess they can still offer us some great fragrances. But I think they're falling back on some of their previous hits or popular fragrances to come up with new versions. So that, that happens very, very uh, often in the fragrance world when things are not selling, maybe. I, I don't know. How, how many of you are fans of um, Serge Lutens and their fragrances? And also their more recent releases. Have there, been, have there been any great releases as of late? I don't have anything new from the house. More, more, most of mine are classics. So this seems like they're pulling some of their classics and making new versions of them. We shall see. So Luban has a new fragrance called Magda. I did a video for their two fragrances, Anna and Ava. So now we have a Magda a version. Uh, they're kind of feminine inspired fragrances but they don't necessarily smell too feminine to me. We, we shall see how this one is but it features notes of pomegranate, cherry, black currant syrup, Indian tuberose, Tunisian orange blossom, gardenia, cinnamon, amaretto, sandalwood, peru balsam, vanilla. Great notes. This one seems a lot warmer than the previous two. One of the um, fragrances, Ava, was all orange blossom, neroli focused and then Anna was uh, a marine rose focused fragrance. So this sounds kind of interesting, a lot warmer, perfect for fall, winter, I guess, launch as the previous two launched uh, for spring and summer. So we shall see how Magda is. But let me know if you're a fan of the fragrances from Luban. Not many people talk about them, but this sounds really, really nice. Amaretto note, kind of gourmand, boozy, vanilla, all, all sounds great to me. So I haven't seen a new fragrance from this house in a long, long time. But Animal has a fragrance called Gold that sounds quite exciting to me and I'm really really curious to try it. Who, who's a fan of Animal and Animal Animal fragrance? Let me know, put a comment down. But Animal Gold sounds really really nice with spices, coumarin, patchouli, lavender, geranium, juniper, amber, oak moss, and bergamot. Maybe it'll be nice but I haven't seen any new fragrances from this house come out since now. I haven't looked up their catalog either. But this particular one sounds really, really nice. I don't know what the price point's going to be, but we shall see. But the next fragrance I'm going to talk to you about that I also have here is Maison Crevelli's Hibiscus Mahajad. Who knows this brand? Uh, this one just launched and it features damask rose, vanilla, hibiscus, leather, mint, cassis, ambrette, cinnamon. Really intense. This is an extrait de parfum. It's rosy, but also tea-like. It's like hibiscus tea. Very, really intense hibiscus smell with that rose and vanilla and the leather note. Uh, check that out. It's Hibiscus Mahajad from the house of Maison Crevelli. But one that I've smelled and I really want to get my hands on to review is Zoologist Perfumes Chipmunk. I think this might actually be my second favorite from Zoologist Perfumes with B still being my favorite. It's a nutty fragrance and very, very woody. And the nuttiness had some gourmandish kind of touches with it. It features notes of hazelnut, cedar, oak, nutmeg, chamomile, vetiver, apopanax, pink pepper, benzoin, guyac wood, amorous, patchouli, animalic notes 
earthy notes and balsam fir. How many of you like zoologist perfumes and what are your favorite zoologist perfumes fragrances? Let me know, put a comment down, but I've smelled chipmunk several times at a store here, Tiger Lily Perfumery. Each time I've gone in, it smelled really, really great. I think it's just now getting its launch all over the place and I really, really love that smell. So the next fragrance I'm gonna to talk to you about is Maison Violet Compliment, a new fragrance for the house of Maison Violet, which I did a video of uh, recently. If you haven't participated in the giveaway for that video, go participate. Uh, the fragrances are created by Nathalie Lorson, and this particular one, Complimented, is also created by Nathalie Lorson. I'm going to close that giveaway very soon. If you haven't watched that video, go participate. But Compliment, uh, and all the fragrances, I've also smelled Compliment, and I think it really does smell great. I think a lot of the fragrances from Maison Violet are really, really delicious. They are perfect. And I, I think being a fan of uh, the fragrances from Nathalie Lorson, uh, has something to do with it, but she does some really, really amazing fragrances. She's been doing quite a bit also lately, as I just mentioned, uh, the Oriana from Marley, and now uh, this one, Compliment from Maison Violet. This has been out for a while, but it's just kind of making its way. It's a 2121 launch, 2021 launch, what am I saying? But it features tuberose, orange blossom, violet leaf, palmarosa, eucalyptus, jasmine, jasmine sambac, benzoin, vanilla, hay, flax, freesia, heliotrope. Very, very delicious fragrance. How many of you are familiar with this house? How many of you watched my video on Maison Violet fragrances? Uh, how many of you sampled compliment? Let me know, put a comment down. And also, if you are a fan of Nathalie Lorson, let me know, what are your favorite fragrances from her? Uh, as a creator of perfume. She does a lot of fragrances, some really, really great ones too. So the last group of fragrances I'm gonna discuss with you is a whole group of fragrances from Estee Lauder, like a private collection or their luxury collection of fragrances. And it seems they're all targeted feminine, uh, but uh, we shall see. The bottles seem a little feminine design as well, so they look like they're definitely uh, feminine targeted. Not sure why they did that, but um, it kind of, leads me to believe that these are not necessarily like ultra luxury niche kind of releases like a lot of um, brands that launch these collections do them unisex. This particular collection seems a little feminine to me just from bottle design and the fact that they say that they're targeted to women. But there's several fragrances in the collection. Blushing Sands, Desert Eden, Dream Dusk, Infinite Sky, Paradise Moon, Radiant Mirage, Sensuous Stars, Tender Light. So obviously from the names you can tell they're, they're a little feminine sounding, but you know, I'm curious to smell them. They do kind of also remind me a little bit of um, Aaron Lauder's collection of fragrances. So Aaron, I don't know who she is. She's related to the Estee Lauder's. Aaron Lauder has Aaron, A-E-R-I-N. Let me know if you guys are fans of that collection. But I, I'm, I'm curious, I'll smell these out. Hopefully they're great. I don't know who the perfumers are, so I can't really say, but some of them do sound great uh, as far as uh, notes go. There's a uh, rose fragrance, there's uh, many different uh, styles all mixed in with uh, the different uh, names of the fragrances. But let me know if you're excited about this collection. Estee Lauder has a new collection of uh, you know luxury style fragrances. Anyway guys, that's all I have for you today. Let me know which fragrances sound the most exciting to you. And let me know which ones you want me to pick up and do reviews on. I'd like to find out, put a comment down so I can find out. But if you've already smelled any of the fragrances I discussed with you today, put a comment down and let me know which one you've uh, smelled, that you've liked, or you've hated, I'd like to find out. Either way, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.